subrings of a ring. Let's look at a couple of more uh, theorems. Okay, let's look at the first one. The intersection of two subrings is a subring. Okay, let's prove this. Let R1 and R2 be two subrings of R. Okay. Now, which means that the additive identity belongs to R1 because it is a subring and 0 belongs to R2. Again, because R2 is a subring of R. Okay, which implies since it belongs to R1 and R2, 0 belongs to R1 intersection R2. Okay. So, which implies that R1 intersection R2 is not equal to an empty set. Let A, comma B belong to R1 intersection R2. So, A belongs to R1 intersection R2 implies that A belongs to R1 and A belongs to R2. Similarly, B belongs to R1 intersection R2 implies that B belongs to R1 and B belongs to R2. Now, since R1 and R2 are subrings, A comma B belongs to R1 implies A minus B belongs to R1 and A times B belongs to R1. Similarly, A comma B belongs to R2 implies A minus B belongs to R2 and A times B belongs to R2. Okay. So, now AB belongs to R1 and A minus B belongs to R1 and a b belongs to r2 a minus b belongs to r2 implies that a minus b belongs to r1 intersection r2 and a times b belongs to r1 intersection r2 which implies that r1 intersection r2 is a subring of r so if we have to look at it pictorially we could say this is a ring r and we have two subrings r1 and r2 so this becomes your r1 intersection r2 so what we are saying is in this theorem if R1 is a subring, R2 is a subring, that means R1 intersection R2 is also a subring. Primarily because if we take two elements belonging to R1 and if it also belongs to R2, then A and B belongs to R1 intersection R2. Right? And which means A minus B also belongs to R1 intersection R2 and A times B also belongs to R1 intersection R2. So, this would be a subring. Okay. So, let's look at the next theorem which takes this a little bit further and the theorem says that intersection of the arbitrary collection of subrings is a subring. So, what it basically boils down to is we can take a, a subset of substrings within a ring, take the intersection of those subset of rings, that intersection would also be a subring. So, here since we are talking of collection of uh, subrings, we need to be a, a little bit um, 
you know careful because we need to use some additional notation so let a alpha be a set where alpha belongs to capital letter lambda okay is an arbitrary collection of the subrings of a ring r okay and here capital lambda is an index set such that a alpha is a subring of the ring r right so uh, what it boils down to is that capital lambda is equal to say 1 2 3 and you know some finite set okay and alpha are these the values in this so it is a set of indexes where each index represents a particular subring okay so let a is equal to intersection of a alpha which would be equal to x belonging to r such that capital x belongs to the set of collections of subring and for all alpha belonging to capital lambda now a is not a empty set since zero of the ring belongs to a alpha for all alpha belonging to capital lambda so it is not going to be an empty set now let a comma b belong to a so which means a belongs to intersection of a alpha right so it is a, you know a cumulative intersection where alpha belongs to capital lambda this implies that a belongs to a alpha for all alpha belonging to capital lambda similarly b belongs to intersection a alpha which implies b belongs to a alpha for all alpha belonging to capital lambda but for all alpha belonging to capital lambda a alpha is a subring of the ring r since it is a subring implies a belongs to a and b belongs to a alpha implies that a minus b belongs to a alpha and a times b belongs to a alpha for all alpha belonging to capital lambda so what this means is a minus b belongs to the cumulative intersection of a alpha where alpha belongs to capital lambda and a b belongs to cumulative intersection of a alpha so the cumulative intersection contains a minus b and a times b for all a b belonging to that cumulative intersection so therefore cumulative intersection of the subrings a alpha where alpha belongs to capital lambda is a subring of r so what this means again pictorially is let's draw a diagram let's say this is our r right we have a subring a1 now there has to be an intersection because we are talking of uh, intersection in this theorem so let's take this so this becomes a2 okay so if we take only two subring then the previous theorem apply so which means a1 intersection a2 is a subring of r 
okay but arbitrary collection so that means we take up one more subring so let's say a3 so cumulative intersection is what the intersection of a1 and a2 is this a1 and a3 is this and a2 and a3 is this so cumulative intersection would be this so that would also form a ring is what this theorem is talking of so a1 intersection a2 is a subring of r a1 intersection a3 is a subring of r a2 intersection a3 is a subring of r a1 intersection a2 intersection a3 is a subring of r so a1 intersection a2 would be what this part right of the previous diagram intersection a3 would be what this part so this is this this is this so intersection between a3 and this which is a1 intersection a2 would be the central part so by applying the first theorem itself repeatedly we can arrive at the same result okay i think that's enough for now bye